From the group chapter number four, my beloved brothers and sisters, group chapter number four. Group chapter number four. One reason we can haunt your mind today, amen, on this 17th day of the Lenten season. Somebody shout 17. Hallelujah. 17 days this afternoon, next Wednesday. Gospel group chapter number four. You will find these words recorded. Says Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And as he was in the well for forty days, he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. We stop right there, my beloved brothers and sisters, and the time is allowed to leave today. They meant for about a few minutes of your time. And then from the seventh, where is the Lord in all your business? Where is the Lord in all your business? Now, I want to know many of us, amen, English teachers and all that. If you read, you should have put that a certain way, but no, I put it the way God gave it to me. Where is the Lord in all your business? I want you to know all of us got some business. And from that, hallelujah. We'll look at today very quickly and say, neighbor, where is the Lord in all your business? Let's just read. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Well, let me the truth be told, all of us have some things that we are pressing, that are pressing in our lives. No one has to know what they are. They're not telling anybody in business. But they are pressing. When I say pressing, they are ever before you. You're dealing with them even as we speak. Most of these things you can't get away from. They are ongoing. They are things from your past and your present, and you have even placed them into your future. Best for said, you can't get away from them. Most of us have come to the frame of mind that you have just learned to deal. You've learned how to deal with them. And for the record, all your things are not bad. Some of our business, amen, are some good things, and for the right reason. But for the sake of reason, let's just say uh, they are like gumbo. They are just a part, a plethora of things that you put into the pot of this thing called life. And for the believer, there are often times in this reasoning with the question, where is the Lord in all this? I would like to offer you an answer today in all of your business. I think since we are in the 17th day of Lent, as I have been described, I'd like for you to consider where Jesus was in his period of time after being baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan. For the text says that after he left Jordan, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Well, for 40 days he was tempted by the devil, and at the end it says he ate nothing. Check the text, because the story explains three separate distinct occasions where this tempting by the devil was done to Jesus. One, the devil challenged him to feed himself, knowing full well that he was fasting. Two, the devil challenged him to his power and authority on the condition he would give him just a little bit more if he bowed down and worshiped him. And three, he challenged him or tempted him to do to himself what he knew was logical and spiritually foolish because he was God's child. I offer you uh, that by now, at day 17 of your listen fast, to consider where the enemy is challenging you right now. That which you have given up for the most part, you probably won't tell the truth about it, but you kind of snuck away, got out of people's view, and broke your fast or your sacrifice 
from some things that you like. Things like what I struggle with, not tell you my struggle, but I struggle with sweet tea and Pepsi Cola. Oh, yeah. I struggle with those things. Yeah. And it's just a day. It's known, amen, as a non penitential day. Good change by some change. What I've been wrestling from. Amen. 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 For 17 days, except Sunday. Man, I'm going to have me some sweet tea today. That's why you tell the truth and stay in the devil, because that's why you're smiling, because if some people have broke their fast somewhere, sometime, at some point, this ass music. Can I take it? Am I, am, I, am I by myself? Oh, yeah. I was talking to one of the members the other day, and she has a fetish like mine. She loves to pay the The Lord knows, uh, just this week, we meet my fast, a wife, and she diligently does. She goes by Kroger and by Sam and by Piggy Wiggly and by CNJ and by Save a Lot and every other kind of place. Now, I don't give her any look about going to get some meat, but I have a problem with what you brought home. Oh, yeah. And the first thing that I helped her get out of the truck, oh, yeah, was a big, big grab bag of ruffles, amen, and Doritos, amen, Tostitos, and all other kind of olds. I was messed up from the floor. And the Lord taught me because I'm supposed to be fasting. And boy, the devil and got in my wife's mind and brought everything that I'm sacrificing for, but I still thank the Lord. The Lord knows your struggle, and He knows mine. Put it in witness here. I offer you that by day 17 of your life is bad. Many of us, amen, have broken them. And if I would try, amen, amen, to do this, amen, the right way, uh, 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 whatever you decided to pass from, or whatever your routine or if you consume, is probably and it's certainly been a struggle by day number 17. And if I would try to map this based upon the 40-day period of the fast, 17 days is just past the third of the journey. And since the Bible speaks of three distinct moments in the wilderness, somewhere from the Jordan River to seven days into the wilderness, Jesus in his humanness, amen, just like you and I, have, must have been challenged or tempted by what? You have been trying to deny yourself wrong. I want you to be, ready, be real with yourself today and say, you know what? Well, it's a struggle. And I want you to know trying to live right, it can be a struggle. Can I get away with trying to deny yourself can be a struggle. And I want you to be honest with yourself and look at your neighbor, look at him square in the eye, say, it's a struggle, it's a struggle, it's a struggle, it's a struggle. And sometimes, in the midst of your struggle, you say, God, where are you in all of this? Uh, uh, this? It's a struggle for us. Amen. We have to understand. I'm coming to encourage you today, but hang on in there. You can do this. Turn up your prayer and your perseverance. I like what Paul says about our struggle in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. He says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to man. I like that right there that Paul must struggle. Hey Amen. I'm not in here by myself. Whether you're male or female or hippopotamus, you still have some struggle. And the truth of the matter is, when we come, amen, together in worship, Amen. We don't come, amen, criticizing each other for our shortcomings, but we come, amen, to high five and love and pray and fellowship with one another. So we are in this together, but with the Lord, we can go through. I want to know, is there anybody in this house this morning that's got some business, some things, that there ain't one thing that's another, that's this, that, or the other. So I think that I'm not in here by myself, because as I begin to spiritually look across this room, three men, there are some folks that struggle with some stuff in their life, and just like all your struggles don't go, so for some of us, three men are struggling 
you put that on, you can't fail to the ground. The 
and I'm going to you this year. The Lord is right there. And before I take my feet, that's enough scripture right there. But I always try to hook up and stay with a message. So one day, there was this man who took him and his family and moved into a new neighborhood. It was a nice 3,000 square foot house. Had a nice baby in backyard. And you know, nowadays, you got what you call private position. But back in the day, there was no great business. There was a lot of separation from your neighbor. And you had a little boy that loved to go out and play basketball after school. So one day, in the new house, in the fifth, fifteen yard. Amen. The boy said, no, I finished my work. Let me go outside and play a little basketball. But when he went out the first day, he knew that a neighbor had a pit bull next door. And Brother Rogers, I know you are cute. And I know you all bark all the time. But this is no disrespect. So you know the tenant. But in order to make the story hook up with the cat, the boy came out down back in his basketball and the big ball on the other side of the street. Can you get a witness here? And the big ball is just like the devil who makes noise day in and day out. 365 days. Seven days a week. <laughs> so the boy was scared. Went back in the house. Went to school the next day. Came back home, got his lesson. Went back outside. Got to the stall again. And the big boy was going up and down the street. <laughs> And by this time, the boy got mad. He said, I'm tired of that big girl barking at me all day. And every now and then, children of God, you got to make up your mind that the devil and his barking will not stop you from where you're going and going. So the boy came out, children in his house to go. In the backyard, one more time. And I don't know about you, it's women's month. But every now and then, a man can remember when he had a crossbow and he was shooting in the sky because he was remember, remember the day that he could really play ball. But I want you to know this boy went about his daily, his daily routine of bouncing his ball. And the devil was on the other side, named Kick Bull, barking at him. And he said, You know what? I've come too far to let the devil destroy my place. So he went to the pit, opened the door, let the fire come in, and put him to town. He thought the girl was ripping his way. But when he opened the gate, the door passed by him. Because he threw his ball over his shoulder. What am I trying to tell you? The devil don't want you, but he wants your gift. I wish I had some help. Look at your neighbor. If your neighbor, what is your gift? If it's slow, don't let it have your gift. If it's slow, don't let it have your gift. If it's slow, don't let it have your gift. If it's slow, don't let it have your gift. Can we bring up the little boy? Don't be bold. If you can't give what you don't need to do, put to your feet and say, No, you don't. I'm going to do it. But if you're going to tell me, I'm a monarchist, I'm a politician, but this is a day that I'll be the one to make the plan. Come on, tell me what to do. If you don't do it, Make room for you. Put your hands together and say thank God. Thank you and all of it. You are my God. You are my praise. You are my Savior. Thank you. Thank you.
something that Jesus can get home. The Bible says that the meeting of the Lord is the Lord. He's the same thing. I know that many of you today feel hungry for God to do something for you. But sometimes, after you have been anointed, you get up from the place of the anointing. When you go into the world and you fly, the enemy is going to come. But there's a time to do it. There's a time to do it. First of all, he'll pass his spot. Because he thought, by now, he ought to be home. The second time, he challenged his superiority and his authority. And said, with all the splendor I'll give to you, if you bow down and worship me, you see the Lord. Don't you know the Lord to serve the Lord and move on? The last time, he preached the church. This is the Lord to the church. He preached the church. And in the 21st century, after doing a survey of people, what people are tired of, tired of people are tired of members of the church. Causing the spirit of those who want them, trying to do them. Our own stubborn, stubborn traditional self is way and doing the strength in the life of what could be a top house. But because we don't believe God can do anything new. Lord, don't have an anointing on you, but don't let the church. God opens up and makes us prepare for a greater work. Boy, it's going to be off the chain. But you got to lose that stuff. And do like you in your wilderness moment. But you listen to the devil. But you listen to the heavenly energy. You listen to God. God says, I'll keep you when you can't keep yourself. The doors of the church are open. 